So in the last video, we talked about what, what we're going to be building, which is going to be this entity component system project. But now I want to talk about what is this going to look like in code from a super, super high level? Um, like, how are we going to fit all of these things together architecturally wise? So obviously this is going to be a relatively simple project, but there's going to, you know, still going to be several different modules that we're going to create that work together. So to begin with, this is going to be a library project. We're not going to have any, um, any of the sort of like a main file. So we're going to use the dash dash live when generating the project. And because of that, uh, we're going to be using integration tests uh, and the unit test together as our way to make sure that what we're building actually works the way we expect it to. That's something called double loop testing. And we'll explain that a little bit as we're going through the project itself. Uh, so to begin with, if we're looking at file structure, uh, we'll have something like our source. Come on, let's move up here. We'll have uh, maybe like source up here and like we'll have tests and then all of our integration tests will go inside of here. So integration tests. Now inside of source, will obviously be all the source code that we're working on. Um, the most like basic one would be that library file. Uh, inside of here is just going to be really simple. This is going to be where our world exists. Now the world is going to be what holds components, it holds resources and all the methods and everything else. The re-exports, uh, it's going to, we're going to try to keep it relatively simple and have everything else be wherever they need to be. So one big thing about entity component systems is in this world is where all of the data goes. That way, when we're developing the game or simulation or whatever we're building with this, uh, we don't have to have multiple state elsewhere. Everything goes inside of here. So that doesn't mean we're going to have to have resources. Um, and then we might as well add in our entities. Okay. Now, how are resources going to be stored? Uh, these are going to be basically just like one off things that are solo and by themselves. So to me, that that says that they should really just be a hash map. So a hash map with key value pairs. So um, now I don't know what this this key. Well, we do know what the key should be. Um, Here's our value is going to be the actual resource itself. So let's imagine that we have a resource that's going to be the size of like the entire arena. That's not something that's uh, that everything needs to have. It's like a one one off thing. Uh, another example would be the frames per second we're targeting. Um, so for our keys, because each one is its unique type, we can have this using the any uh, type ID. So from the type ID, we can then grab the value out. This will allow us to store things in. If it's unique type ID, we can then query things out very easily by just handing it the example of the type that we want out. And we're just going to get it back. Uh, OK, that's that's great for resources. Now, entities are going to be similar, but not exactly the same. We're going to store them also in a hash map, but like we saw down here, we're going to be using vectors for each of our components. So really, we're going to have a hash map of components. And then that's going to be a vector. Of like specific things. Now, what is a component? Well, we know that it's going to be a um, uh, it's going to be a value of some kind, but we also don't really care what exactly that value is. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to have a type ID as the key. 
The value is gonna be this vector. Inside of that, we're gonna need interior mutability so we can change these things. So that means we're gonna to have to have an RC for reference counting. And inside of that, we're gonna to have to have a ref cell. And inside of that is gonna be, well, we don't really know. It's gonna be something. So we're gonna have this just be, well, anything really. Uh, we don't really care as long as it is just something uh, that implements any, which really is anything, then um, we can uh, we can store it in, in this data structure here. So that way we can have a whole bunch of these in here. Now this is gonna be a complicated type, but we'll work through that. Uh, now this value here for the resources is gonna be exactly the same thing, um, except uh, we don't have to have the RC and ref cell we can just have this be a box with the die in any. And that's because we don't need interior mutability. If we really need to mutate the resources, we can just get a mutable reference to it. But that's because we only need, you know, it. we can pass it around by, by uh, mutable reference if necessary. Okay, so we have entities, we have resources. Um, now, if something like we, we also need queries for these entities. So for these queries, they're all the queries are only for entities. So I'm actually going to have that be a sub module of entities itself. And entities is going to be able to reach into queries or vice versa. We haven't decided yet. Um, and then that's going to then allow us to query out all the data from this internal database that we're creating. Okay, that's great. And the last thing here is what if something goes wrong and we have to like let our, our user know, hey, this went wrong, this is not good, we need, we, we have an error. Well, we're gonna have errors here and basically the root uh, that everything else can pull from and then return a special error. This is also going to be re-exported uh, so that way our users can grab these errors and then check against them just in case they, they need to handle those errors in different ways depending upon what happens. Uh, this is gonna be the folder structure that we're gonna be working with here is uh, just li the live resources, entities, and heirs file, then we're gonna have a folder that our queries goes into, um, which is gonna be based upon the entities here. And uh, to recap, the data is gonna be stored in hash maps, and then we're gonna be using essentially dynamic dispatch using uh, a dynamic, um, uh, dynamic memory management for using the any trait. Uh, this prevents us or allows us to not have to use our own trait uh, for any of these things. We can just use the any trait. It is going to force our users to have to downcast to sort of convert things back into their own objects, but it also allows our users to use any object they want and they don't have to conform to any specific thing as long as it's a unique type that they pass in. But we'll go through all of that as we're building out the project. And I'm going to build out the project with you um, and you can follow along uh, if you so would like to. Anyways, I'm excited to get forward with this. I will uh, I will see you in those videos and uh, uh, well, see you then. Bye.